If you have to play an A chord, are you always going to play that as an open chord or as a bar chord on the fifth fret? If so, this lesson is going to be for you. So this lesson is going to be about chords and how you can learn different inversions and use those cage shapes up the neck to start getting different sounds out of your guitar and start challenging yourself more. And this is going to help you avoid the intermediate plateau. So we're going to go over a few chord progressions and talk about how you can play those differently to challenge yourself and start incorporating some of these new shapes into your playing. And this chord progression is gonna be C sharp minor to E to B to A, and then a little variation off of that, it's gonna be C sharp minor to E to A to B. And we see a chord progression like that on a chord sheet or whatever, and we're just gonna play that how we know to play it. We're gonna play C sharp minor to E, to B, to A. And there's nothing wrong with that, and depending at what level you are on guitar, that could be challenging for you. But if it's not challenging anymore, then you should start looking at different variations of how to play something like that. And that's what we're gonna go over today, because we know our, I'm gonna assume you know your cage system, so you've at least learned those shapes. We're gonna talk about different inversions that you can use and things to kind of spice this up. So that's not a terribly hard chord progression. I picked it because it's got it's got bar chords in there and it's also got open chords in it for now. So the different things you can do with this is we're gonna keep that C sharp minor the same. We could pick a different C sharp minor, but we're gonna keep that the same because the way we're gonna play our E chord is gonna be a C cage shape. So this is an E chord right here. It's seven, six, four, five on your A, D, G, and B string. So this is just your C cage shape without the bar. And then we're gonna get to our, our B chord, which this would be your typical B chord right here. And what I'm doing there, I'm using my left hand to mute, mute these strings, the, the low E and the A. And I'm just playing this triad right here, which is just on your fourth fret, you're barring your D, G, and B string. Any triad, when you're playing it in a chord progression, you're gonna only wanna do it for one bar because you're not gonna wanna do a whole chord progression of triads if you're playing by yourself. If you're playing in a band setting, then definitely you can play triads all the time. But they're just, they're just too thin if you're trying to play and sing by yourself without those bass notes. To keep this moving, you go to the A chord and the A chord is just your typical A chord with, with the bar here. And that's so you can go from a bar here. To a bar here. So really the only variation we've done so far is that E chord in the C shape. It's an easy transition once you get it down to go from this C sharp minor shape to this C cage shape, which is an E chord. And not to get too much theory here, but you'll, you'll see a, a progression like this come up a lot because that's a six and that's a one, which is your relative major and minor. And to incorporate that in your playing, you really just leave your middle finger and your ring finger in the same spot. And you're only moving your index finger and your pinky. And there's one other variation that I wanted to show you on this. So we get through the C sharp minor and the E. And what this is, is it's still, you're still barring on your fourth fret, but then you're adding your ring finger here to the sixth fret on your A string. And what this is, is it's part of your G cage shape. So you could add your pinky here. It's a big stretch to add the pinky. And 
and it starts to give these chords a totally different feel, right? Than just like, than just this. And they're the same chords. It's just different voicings. And those different voicings make it interesting. And then the second part of this was, so you do that through one time, that C sharp minor to E to A to, or C sharp minor to E to B to A. And then on the second time through, you do C sharp minor, E, A, E. When you're doing that, you can go from C sharp minor to E the same way. And that can be your A. That can be a triad right here on your seven, six, and five on your D, G, and B string. Right back to that E chord. If you've never gone from this E shape to this A shape to this E shape, that's a challenging little transition too. And this does come to just keep you more challenged and it's gonna give you different sounds out of your guitar. And you know, if you're playing with somebody that's playing this just a typical way, you're gonna get a lot of different register than the person who's playing just that open E chord by playing an E chord like this. Because they sound completely different, but they sound the same. And they're the same, but they're different. And if you didn't know, this is the verse to Brown Eyed Women by the Grateful Dead, so. Made you, made you learn a Grateful Dead song. Check it out, it's a good one. You can do this with any chord progression. So if you're taking just a G to an E minor to a D, it could sound like this. And those are just your typical fifth string bar chords and that's cool, but you're, you have a lot of movement here. You're moving from down here all the way up to here, right? On your guitar neck. And that's fine to have movement and everything, but you can do this all in one, one area of the neck without moving your hand besides just changing your chords. And what we could do instead for that G to E minor to D is we'll keep it in this E minor area around the seventh fret. At least that's where we're gonna hold our, our hand. But we're gonna grab this C shape G chord to our E minor. And then we're gonna grab that G-shaped D chord. Because your D chord's right here. So your bar is right here on the seventh fret. And you can throw your pinky in or you can leave it off. You can get more comfortable. What I did when I was learning this stuff is like, I got more comfortable with this shape with just my ring finger in the bass. And then I've started to stretch my pinky over the top to get that extra bass note in there. But if you look at this, I mean, you don't have to move your hand very much at all. So, you know, let me in, know in the comments below if you use any of these shapes, if you try and incorporate those chord shapes into your playing or not, and if it's been beneficial to you. And this stuff, just like anything else, uh, it's... It's tough at first, but once you start practicing it, you're gonna be able to play it cleaner and faster, and you're gonna be able to incorporating it without really thinking about it. Just like when you first started out and those open chord shapes switching between those was difficult, the bar chords were difficult to get, but eventually you got them because you practiced at it and you were determined. So don't just stop there. That's the message of this. Don't stop at the, the typical 
chords that everybody knows. You know, start branching out and learning some of these more difficult chords and you'll be pretty satisfied with yourself. If you're interested in this stuff and you want to start incorporating it into your playing, then it's going to help you understand where these chords are on your fretboard. And if you want a, a cool, fun way to just start understanding your fretboard more by just noodling around, then you should watch this video right here.